Thank you. Welcome everyone to PC314 Media and Technology. Let's take a moment to pray and then we get started. Could somebody please pray and we'll start. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the skills and the talent that you have placed in front of us. That you have placed in us, Lord. And God, I pray for the course that we are learning. Um, help us to understand everything that pastor is teaching us so that God, we can use it uh, wherever we go uh, for the expansion of your kingdom, Jesus. I bless all my classmates. We thank you for Pastor Ashish. And God, we ask for a good Wi-Fi connection throughout the session. May your name be glorified. May your name be lifted high. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. Just to uh, last week, we did not have class. So just very quickly to recap um, what we had uh, shared in our very first uh, uh, day of classes. We, uh, we went through some introduction about um, just being aware of current trends. Uh, digitally, what's happening around the world. And of course, you know, we have to stay updated um, uh, in what's happening. Uh, the essence of it is that more and more people are connected online using digital tools. And so it, this is actually a great opportunity for us to reach people. At the same time, uh, we must be aware how different generations are relating to technology uh, and also being aware that Gen Z, Gen Alpha, uh, the young, basically those who today would be in their teens and twenties um, are a generation. You know, they, they they call them as digital natives. They were born with all of this technology around them. They grew up with that technology, and uh, and so how that all of that has impacted their lives. We need to be aware of it so we can address uh, those needs as we minister to them. Um, then we went through lessons chapters two and three. Um, very quickly, we mentioned that uh, we should be open uh, to using contemporary methods in Christian ministry. That's it's not something we uh, we should be averse towards or run away from. No, Let's see how we can you know leverage technology uh, in ways that we can be relevant to people. The ways we can be it'll help us reach people. It'll help us be very responsive to people. And of course, we have to be respectful. Um, uh, as people reach out to us, you know, it actually helps us be respectful. That means we can provide information without forcing it on them, let, letting people explore uh, at their convenience in way that they would like to explore and uh, explore the Christian faith. And we also uh, looked at some guidelines just, you know, to keep this in mind that as we use contemporary methods, tools, technologies, media, etc., some things we must not forget while uh, we are uh, we are being relevant. Uh, we do not compromise in the, our message. Our message is still the message of Jesus Christ. It's about the cross and everything the Bible teaches. Our motives must be pure. Uh, our motives must not, for instance, be competing with other people. Right? Or how is that person using technology? How is that church? And let me try to be better than them. That kind of a thing. You know, I'll keep your motive pure. You're here to glorify God. We glow. You're here to reach people. You know that mo that motivation is good. Uh, we must be blameless in our conduct. So as we are becoming relevant using methods and techniques or technology, our, bl our conduct must be beyond reproach. People should not find fault uh, with us in the process. Right? We shouldn't lose sight of godliness and integrity and those kinds of you know the, the the core values and principles of the, of the teaching of god's word and also we must look for lasting fruit so don't just look we shouldn't just our goal is not just to entertain or create some excitement our goal is life transformation bringing people to the lord helping people encounter god you know yes we're going to use contemporary methods and we're going to use tools and media and technology all of that but what is our goal? Lasting fruit. Right? So that we must not. 
So having given that background today, and I've shared these notes, we're going to talk about, hopefully we'll cover at least three more, three areas. Uh, think about it on how things used to be and how things, the methods in these areas are changing. One is about the ministry of God's word, about uh, the place of worship, and about uh, worship itself. So three things we will try to cover today. And if you don't, we can continue it next week. So uh, when you think about, and, 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 and I would like to have, uh, you know, at the end of each, each of these chapters, we'll have a little time of discussion. I'd like you to share your thoughts, uh, your observations, what's happening in your part of the world, uh, so we can kind of you know, share share ideas and thoughts, right? So we'll do a little bit of discussion uh, and see. So in how the word of God is ministered, and typically in a church service or in other settings, when the way we are ministering God's word uh, has changed, has changed. Uh, one very obvious noticeable thing is in the length of sermons. Right. In the early days of uh, the Reformation, we're going back into the 1500s, 1600s, the Puritan movement. This was just right after Martin Luther. You know, those times sermons were one to three hours long. Can you imagine sitting and listening to somebody? But it was like, hey, this is the Bible. This, is, you know, it's like people are getting access to the Word, and so uh, there was no. There's not necessarily some sort of a time limit. You know, you just came and people spoke and they just sat and listened and listened. And they just spoke, uh, explaining the word of God. So generally, that was how, you know. Uh, and then during the revivals, again, there was no like, you know, here, a 40-minute sermon. It was, you preach and God is working. You keep preaching, God is working. And that's it. You know, uh, it could go for more and more than an hour, sometimes hours when God is moving. Then, you know, we, of course, culturally things began to change. Um, you know, people wanted to dedicate a certain number of time in congregational worship. And so then, you know, we had a little bit more structure. And nowadays, you know, generally, I'm, I'm not saying every church is like this, but generally, a sermon may last for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and then some other churches' sermons may be very quick, 15 to 20 minutes, finished. <laughs> the whole service may last one hour. Yeah, it's like almost, you know, very, very fast. People come in, 20 minutes of worship maybe, 30 minutes or 20, 30 minutes sermon, uh, 10 minutes, some in miscellaneous things, over, finished. One hour service is over. People are in and out. So everything has changed, right? Um, sermon itself is 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, you know. Then in the in the way the message is being preached, things have changed. Uh, uh, early days, it was verse by verse, ex expository, exposition of a text. So you take a text and you preach and explain every, you know, every aspect of what's in that text. And you start with biblical truth, and then you explain it to the people on how they should apply it in their lives. Now the trend has changed. We, we start with something people are experiencing, facing, or feeling. Uh, we start with a need, and then we are bringing it back to the Bible. So I'm not saying every sermon is like this, but the general trend is like, okay, you first get their attention. You start talking about things that they can relate to, and then you try to bring that to the Bible. So it's, um, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but I'm just saying, you know, this is what we're seeing these days. And uh, also, we see that many sermons are very narrative, sometimes lots of illustrations, sometimes uh, even in churches or services, you'll have conversational types of, you know, like people sit and have a conversation and that becomes part of the sermon, like a dialogue sermons. Uh, so, so many different things are happening. Uh, and then, you know, of course, 
a uh, lot of sermons uh, using drama, visual aids, slides, short videos, all those kinds of things. So, you know, I'm not saying everything is good or everything is bad, but this is what you're seeing, how people are communicating God's word in a typical church service setting. Um, and there's, you know, so many contemporary ways in which people communicate um, things, also using contemporary examples. And I just put two uh, videos, linked to two videos here. We probably will watch one of them. Uh, you can, and you'll find many, many things. But I think uh, this one, this sermon by Jensen Franklin, he's using pizza, and a pizza box is an example. It's like how Jesus, in his day, would talk about farming, sheep, coins, oil, jar, all those kind of things. Bringing home a message, uh, I think, uh, you know, just using uh, uh, a simple uh, pizza and a pizza box um, to bring a message, or just to help people, the audience understand. It's quite interesting. Uh, so it's about three or four minutes. I'll forget. Well, let's just let's listen to this. Uh, there's so many that you'll find online. I just, you know, let me just pause here and let me. Let's just look at it just to, you know, this is an example of how, um, and I'm not promoting any preacher here. I'm just using this as illustration. Um, so let's just give me a minute. Oops. Okay. Let me share my screen and the audio. Hope it comes through. Uh, just as an example, all right, um, not uh, specifically promoting um, uh, any preacher or anything, just, uh, okay, I hope you, you can listen to my audio. Yeah. Pizza. And the pizza guy showing up at your hotel room tonight, and he's got your pizza but he doesn't have a box, he's just got it in his hand. And the cheese is oozing down all over his clothes and it's falling all over the floor. And you don't know where that hand has been. You don't know what he's been doing with that. Come on, somebody. And, and can you imagine, you know the first question you would ask him if he was standing there saying, hi, did you order this pepperoni pizza? The first question you would ask is, where? is the box because I was expecting the product to come in a vessel I was expecting the product to come in a box well what I want you to understand is this box is only worth 39 cents It's not very valuable. It's just, our, but it takes on a tremendous importance and value because of what is placed in it. I want you to understand, that, listen to me, the box does not give value to the product. It's the product that gives value to the box. We're just the vessel and Christ is in us and we shouldn't get puffed up when God starts using us. We're just the 39 cent box. What I'm preaching to you is you don't have to be great. You don't have to be super good looking and look like a movie star. You don't have to be super talented, but you do have to be clean and you have to be empty. And if you'll just be clean and be empty, God says, if you'll give me a vessel, I'll give you a miracle. I'll give you my all. I'll give you my purpose I'll give you my wheel for your life okay so that was just um oops let me pause there all right what a fake page all right so um you know, what do you, what do you think about that? The illustration. 
I think it's too think much for an illustration, boss. Too much. <laughs> too much for a, uh, a sermon illustration. Sermon illustration. <laughs> okay. Any other thoughts? I think it helps us to understand better, get the grab the message easily for the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that. You know, uh, he, he's using uh, an example that is relevant to his audience, of course, this is North America. So pizza, pizza in a box, cheese, pepperoni pizza. Yeah, they're all very aware of it. They probably, you know, have pizza uh, every week or every other week, probably. So it's something that the, his audience uh, can really understand. And uh, he brings home a very simple point. Uh, you know that we are the we are like the pizza box. We are vessels, and you know God uses us to deliver things. So, just a simple example, and um, that's relevant to his audience. And uh, he's picking something that's from you know our time, just like how Jesus in his day used all kinds of examples from his time, the people that they could relate to. He's picking an example, and he brings it out. Um, so I think it's, you know, and, and like this, you know, there's so many, so many examples that you'll find uh, online, and uh, and 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 the, the 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 nice thing about these examples is that these things stick in our minds, right? Uh, you can always oh pizza and uh, pizza box, you remember that, and then you connect it back to okay, what was the point he mentioned? Yeah. So it kind of helps make the point stick in our minds. So it does help. Uh, like that, you know, we can see that uh, uh, the kinds of things people are doing, uh, illustrations as, you know, as, as is contemporary. However, you'll also find some examples that, you know, that go way off uh, you know, I've seen one example, or you know, some examples where it, it, it just goes off, where the attention shifts to the example itself. Exam you know, for instance, uh, in one situation I saw, you know, people playing ping pong or table tennis on, you know, Sunday sermon, the sermon, they, they have a table tennis uh, table on the stage and they're playing going back and forth and that's an illustration for that sermon uh, uh in some cases you know you, you know, the pastor will come riding on a bike on the stage uh it's kind of in some cases it just pushes things uh, a little way too much maybe uh so the, the 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 point is that the attention has shifted to oh what bike was he riding and all that stuff you know and then they forget the whole sermon itself um and, and so we have to be a little careful um the other things we're seeing in in uh, in, in preaching is um you know um the, the focus also you know it's also like that uh, in the preaching um the messages have been kind of categorized in how we are preaching you know in god we say okay gospel crusade we preach the focus is to reach the lost in church services uh mainly we talk about discipleship we talk about equipping the believers so there's more solid bible teaching type of uh, messages and then there is these there is that there was a trend of uh, seeker sensitive services so um, and this was very popular um in the 80s 90s 2000s when churches were saying okay we'll be seeker sensitive so it was almost like the sunday service was was like um, a presentation that would attract people who were seeking um uh, or, or or trying to attract people who are just exploring the christian faith so the service uh, the message was very seeker sensitive kind of type of message now i i you know so there, there has been a lot of questioning about and, and and necessarily i think it was a good thing to question this whole thing about seeker sensitive preaching 
uh, which took place. Uh, I think the intent was good, meaning, okay, here are people who are looking for, uh, well, exploring the Christian faith, so let's try to get them in every Sunday to church, make them want to come back, uh, give them, you know, messages that they can relate to type of thing. But then what happened in the long term was uh, you're preaching Sunday after Sunday, if you're preaching just simple, you know, kind of messages, people who have come to faith, they're not able to grow. Right? So obviously in the church, uh, a majority people are people who have committed their life to Christ. But Sunday after Sunday, they're listening to these secret sensitive type of messages. They're not growing spiritually, they're stagnating. And, and, and that came out in a study. I think the study was put out early 2000, I think around 2003, Willow Creek Church uh, in uh, uh, I forget the city in, in Illinois. Um, uh, they were among the leading churches who started out the secret sensitive services and movement. But after almost 30 years of doing that, they uh, 20 plus, almost 30 years of doing seeker sensitive services, they, they did an assessment of the congregation and they found out that uh, the spiritual formation, the spiritual development of the people was something they lacked. You know, uh, And they put out that study publicly as well. So that was a drawback. And, and the nice thing was they did that study, they realized where, you know, what was lacking and uh, so then they had to make course correction and start discipling believers and so on. Uh, so that was a, you know, a drawback of this, this whole type of preaching, preaching messages that were very light and uh, attracting people, but not developing people, not growing people. Um, other delivery styles that we're seeing these days, you know, uh, traditionally we should preach from a pulpit, like a wooden pulpit, a big wooden pulpit, you stand behind and you preach. And nowadays, uh, you know, sometimes you see people pulpits, sometimes you don't see pulpits. Uh, there are various ways in which the preacher engages the audience by getting them to speak back or participate in the service itself. Uh, for good or worse, for better or for worse, I don't know, but the attire of <laughs> preachers has also changed. You know, uh, there you know there were times when people wore something that was more uh, formal, and now it's gone to places where preachers are wearing you know all, all kinds of things. So, and the attire is uh, all kinds. So, whether it's good or bad, um, yeah, I don't know. And um, so there's also the change in the physical place of preaching. We'll talk about it in the next chapter, but. What I want to think about is, you know, there's, there's all these changes that have taken place in the way the word of God is being preached, right? Uh, in the length of the message, in how the message is being presented, how the truth is being presented to people, and the kinds of illustrations being used, in uh, how the preacher or the pastor, the preacher himself is presenting coming before the people, all these changes are taking place and it's happening everywhere, right? It's uh, all over the world, in the Christian world, these changes thing. So I want us to just take a little bit of time to discuss, you know, what are your thoughts and what, is, what do you feel is, okay, good? And what do you feel is like, hey, it's not good and we should avoid those kinds of pitfalls. I just want to open for a discussion so that we can exchange our thoughts. Um, and so on. Okay. All right. So I see a question there from John Paul. Uh, could you share some examples of seeker sensitive services, examples of topics? Um, now, I, I've, I haven't listened to too much uh, of these seeker sensitive services. I've only read about it because um, I think uh, the pioneer, pioneer, pioneering church in this was Willow Creek Church. Or, led by Pastor Bill Hybels. This was back, like I think from starting in the 70s on. Um, but, uh, and I've never attended one, you know, I'm not, I've not gone to one of his services to uh, attend it myself. But generally by reading, um, um, the the whole service was geared towards those who are very, just exploring the Christian faith. So it would be, uh, uh, 
short time worship, but more of a presentation type of worship, maybe good singing by the choir and so on. Uh, the messages would be on themes and topics that these people could relate to. Now, some of the bad examples I've heard of in this whole thing was, you know, pastors, preachers using uh, uh, segments of, you know, the latest movie, uh, the latest, or maybe even the late, uh, uh, newest book, not necessarily by a Christian author, I'm talking just general, you know, any movie that's, you know, on, or any mu or even a song that would be, you know, uh, trending at that time, using segments of that as a way to start up the message, as a way to get the attention of the audience, and from there trying to present something that is biblical, scriptural, right? Or even using these segments of movie segments in their messages, or sometimes using uh, uh, immediate needs of the people. You know what are they going through you know maybe trauma or so basically taking the felt needs but using that as a topic and uh, and not necessarily going into some sort of bible study but just pointing them you know to jesus so you could start off with something that's happening in the culture whether it's entertainment music movies uh, so you could start off with something that's going on in the social society social matters you could start off with something that are the felt needs of the people they're going through, you know, or whatever felt needs, and then bring in, just point them to Jesus, right? Or point them to one or two scriptures in the Word of God. So that way, you're addressing something that they can relate to immediately as they come into service, and then you're pointing them to one or two words, scripture. That would be, you know, kind of how they would approach this. Uh, the good side, I mean, so I, I will, I will allow us to discuss that. So, what, what do you think about? So, I hope I answered your question, John. Just giving oh, a yes, Pastor. Um, so, uh, I just want us to discuss here um, in the preaching and the ministry of the word. You know, we just tried to point out several different changes that are taking place in the contemporary church. So we're trying to use contemporary methods. We're trying to be relevant. We're trying to be contemporary. And so all these changes are being made globally. You're seeing it everywhere. What are the pros and cons, you know, good and the bad? And what are some things we should be very careful about in all of these changes? I'd just like us to discuss, like, love to hear your thoughts. So feel free to share, please. Collins, please go. Um, so I think the. Oh, John. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. So uh, I think the usage of illustrations, um, the uh, the purpose of uh, having pulpit or not pulpit, I think that is quite relatable to people at this time and age. But the thing is, when it shifts away uh, the attention of people to the word and and. When it reaches a point that, for example, one of the things that we discussed regarding the attire of the uh, preacher, and uh, and a lot of discussion goes on what kind of brand he is using, what costly it is, how costly it is, and so on. So uh, that actually diverts people from uh, listening to the truth of the word of God, I believe. Mm. Good, good. Collins, you want to share something? Yes, Pastor. I think just to, literally we are here just to avoid the mistakes that many preachers have, especially those who who come to, to, to minister when they are not trained, properly trained, or they not attend the right the right university or the right college. But again, I would think that there are three things, two things a person should do, look at. One should be you should always be true to the word of God. You should always have your stick here remain true to the word of God. Number two would be understand your audience. There, there might be an example that does not work 
where I stay, uh, but when it can work where you are, we should avoid cut and paste because if you only copy and paste whatever you see, it might be offensive to some other people. Mm -hmm. Lastly, but not least, you should always never take anything for granted. We must prepare. We must prepare and listen to the Holy Spirit as we, we prepare to meet those people. I would like to put a full stop there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good. Good points. Good points. Anyone else? Um, as what are the pros and cons? What are some of the things we should have, be careful of? Go ahead, Divya, please. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I think uh, with the basically uh, with uh, pastors trying to reach out to uh, a large number of people, uh, they tend to uh, mostly, uh, I think, focus on the seeker-sensitive kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, an approach. Uh, nothing wrong, uh, but. Uh, as uh, more people are reached out, uh, as you were uh, rightly saying, like uh, the spiritual growth of those who are already committed, uh, already committed believers, it is actually stunted. Um, yeah, I, we like we have personal experience being part of such church, uh, churches. So uh, I won't say um, reaching out to a large number of people is. Uh, uh, is a bad thing it is a good thing but at the same time uh, it uh, the spiritual growth of people are challenged also you feel like a drop in the sea mm. uh, re you don't really have a kind of a fellowship uh, because uh, maybe the crowd is changing uh, the crowd is moving uh, so uh, maybe you're seeing a different set of people all the time so uh yeah that's another one of the negative aspects of um, uh, uh, you know trying to reach out to a large number of people and also what uh, i could say is uh, uh yeah the attention sometimes uh is much on the person who's speaking you know the pastor who is speaking about his uh, life and uh, we had uh, we had like situations where they would even uh, show their family uh, you know pics or their homes and their yard and all that so i feel it does uh, i'm not sure where the focus is at that kind of in those situations uh yeah and also we have seen kind of um, the church becomes very uh, in in those scenarios. Uh, there will be life groups, of course, uh, where you get to connect. But it becomes very, uh, uh, especially if it is an international kind of a diverse kind of a church. We uh, it becomes like uh, a particular nationality or a particular community just come together at, at, into a life group that may, may or may not help uh, for the spiritual growth of each one. So the, uh, these are some, uh, you know, uh, mm. advantages uh, that we have observed. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, but uh, um, yeah, even, um, uh, yeah, I think there is a shift of focus that happens when more people are, you know getting into and the concerns of uh people but uh, especially in our uh, in churches uh the older generation the elderly people who have the wisdom and the you know they have the experience they are less heard so mm -hmm. uh even if the um uh, they try to, you know, do um, uh, kind of try to support uh, in ways of prayer and, you know, giving godly counsel. They might not be heard of much. So what happens in the end, it will cause disintegration of the church. Mm -hmm. Slowly, like one life group, uh, maybe uh, the elderly people, have, what the life group that they were having, they can completely, uh, you know, um, stop coming to the church and it causes the disintegration 
of the church because people are looking for places where they can grow and they are you know their concerns are heard so yeah yeah that's something that we have mm. observed yeah all right, all right yeah thank you for sharing thank you anyone else uh, what are the pros and cons with these changes that we are seeing in the ministry of the word uh you know so many so many so i think there's so many it impacts people in in so many ways any other thoughts um i would love to talk about the pros <laughs> i haven't when you said of these changes looking back in my place i haven't seen any change still there are preachers uh, even though when the pastor says 45 minutes, they go one and of us and the, and we are all just wondering when the preacher is going to end the message. And I feel this length of sermon has changed over time. It's, it's actually a good thing because uh, that like Sundays are the days people get rest. So you can't keep preaching for two hours, two and a half hours. Uh, and, and they feel... And the people, they feel like if the pastor says 40 minutes, I should preach one hour. That shows I'm a better preacher. That's that's the mindset of the people, of some people over there. And the format of teaching hasn't changed in some uh, places yet. Uh, they still uh, don't have any illustrations. And uh, I even last time when I went back, I see the pastors gossiping about others uh, in, on the pulpit and all this. So I wish... They could have little change in the format. Uh, they, they could have some specific order, specific topic, uh, not just coming and speaking something random. And an illustration actually helps. I, I wish it happens uh, where, uh, where it's not happening. Because uh, uh, growing up as, as a young girl in Christ, uh, I look for illustrations whenever a preacher preach. Uh, even I, that, that helps me better uh, growing up. Uh, some of the illustration keeps uh, staying in my mind uh, because I've seen it. Uh, something about this, seeing the illustration, I think it actually helps. Even when you are teaching I, uh, about the illustration, I remembered various illustrations uh, in my mind what I already saw. And uh, even uh, pulpit, it's still some places they still prefer it. Even uh, pulpit should be there. And uh, like when I when I grew up, there are there are times when I unfortunately went and st stood near the pulpit, and it becomes a big sin. Right? <laughs> Only the pastor has to stand there. And I think even these things should be changed. It's it's not about the pulpit. It's not about. Uh, it's not about that. It's about the message they preach. So I think even that's a good change that uh, we have brought. That it's okay if a pulpit is there. If a pulpit is not there, it's, it doesn't matter. It's not about the pulpit <laughs> anymore. And uh, attires of preachers, uh, various churches. It, it, it's a. It's always a controversy in Tamil <laughs> Nadu. The attires, especially when it comes to women, it becomes uh, very, very. Uh, heavy like everything is being noticed whether they are uh putting the dupatta over them or not uh, whether they are covering their heads or not uh, all this becomes very important and uh, to an extent even now when people start doing it then then it becomes what's the price of their sari how how <laughs> everything comes into focus and uh, i think it's 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 all a good chain that we have brought. All this doesn't matter. Uh, it's about the message that we preach, and uh, I think people people should start uh, realizing it. Like some some changes are good, yeah, uh, but the main thing should not be changed. I don't uh, I don't think people holding on to the pulpit, holding on to the attire, is gonna bring any good uh, spiritual changes uh, in their life. It's just it's just the tradition that they keep following, and uh, they feel something holy about it, which which obviously I don't prefer. Uh, when it becomes holy, when a pulpit becomes holy, when when an attire becomes holy, I think that's where uh, the mistakes or the wrong teachings come from. Like it's not about the pulpit. It's not about there are pastors who carry their pulpit and. <laughs> they go. <laughs> because they feel like something anointing and some they don't 
uh, trust in the anointing that God has given them. So I think some of these changes are good that gives a good people a wider perspective like oh it's not about the pulpit it's not about the dress it's not about uh the timings or anything but it's about the word so from my side i i've seen this uh prose uh as you preach yeah um, thank you for sharing very interesting uh we had uh divya's perspective being in a contemporary church uh, with and you know what has the impact of a lot of emphasis on seeker sensitive etc and then we have Jeffina's perspective being in a traditional church uh, how change is very urgently needed <laughs> so you've got both extreme both ends uh, that we share that's very interesting um you know uh, yeah and uh, let's look at john's comment there yeah. as the attention span of people has reduced due to the invasion of media i think it's good to have 30 to 40 minutes duration for the word yeah i think being sensitive to the attention span how much of attention the people that we can keep you yeah, know 30 40 minutes is as reasonable it's good we have to be mindful of that i think so let's try to summarize this yeah so the essence of what we want to take away is change is good if it is serving you know uh, the purpose of god advancing god's kingdom bringing god's word in a way that's relevant and meaningful to the people we are ministering and uh, i think what the essence of what's being shared is you know we need to stay true to the word of god bring the word of god in a way that's relevant to the audience um, but focus on you know don't lose sight of while we want to reach new people we also have to focus on the spiritual growth of people and the community and all those things that need to be built the spiritual needs of the people must be addressed from the word of god in in a very healthy way right so we have to do that and while we make changes we must not bring attention to ourselves right so it shouldn't be about you know what fancy clothes I'm wearing or <laughs> what I'm wearing. Uh, in fact, uh, if we can be there on you know as preaching the word when you're preaching the word, be there in such a way that uh, people don't want to spend it, pay attention to what you're wearing. It's like yeah yeah okay it's all very simple. Just listen to the word. Um, that's a good thing I think. And the focus becomes on okay this is God's word. Focus on encountering God encountering his presence, fellowshipping with each other, you know, keep the main things as the main thing. I think that's, uh, that's, that's something we should keep the focus on. And using illustrations, like we said, as long as it's getting the point across, sure, the help is very helpful uh, for people to remember. And practical application, how do you apply the word in that context, in that place, you know, like, like Collins was saying, it will be different in different parts of the world, but how are people in that place going to apply it relevant to them? Uh, don't copy paste because something in one part of the world may not be relevant in another part of the world. So uh, we have to be very careful. All right. Uh, fine. So let's, uh, we'll pause here. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate each one sharing your thoughts. Um, uh, we'll um, we'll go for a break. When we come back, there are two more things we'll talk about. One is the change of the place and how the the congregation is assembling. Again, very interesting to see how that has changed, how that has evolved. And then we will talk about worship. How worship has changed. You know, from the days of the early church, or we could even say from the days of the Bible, Bible times, to where worship is today. It's it's such a huge change, and uh, we have to ask. You know. Is the change good or not? And uh, what are some of the things we have to be careful of? So we'll discuss those two things uh, after we come back. So let's be back in about 15 minutes, 11, 11 o'clock, and we'll pick up on those two topics. Thank you.